Good morning and welcome to Maiden Creek Church, where God is still speaking and God's work is done through our hands. We have a lot going on here. Right after church at 10 o'clock, we're going to have Sunday school on Zoom. And Sarah Ann and Natalie have an Earth Day scavenger hunt for you. At 5.30 this afternoon, Maiden Creek Church has their first softball game. And uh, they didn't play at all last year, so everyone is up and ready to go. The game will start at 5.30 at the Blanded Fire Company Field, and the concession stand will be open, and that supports the girls' softball team. Time we can go and say hi to each other being outside. However, if you're walking around and close to people, please do wear your mask. We are continuing to collect items to fill the pantry of our family in need. There are some um, things that we still need. You can go on to that Sign Up Genius. The link is in the weekly email. And uh, you can bring a Monday, Wednesday, or Friday of next week. When, from 10 to 2 while the office is open. And we're starting a new Bible study the first week of May. And we're going to use the book... The Bad Girls of the Bible, and there's information about that in the weekly email. So let us ring that bell, remind the neighborhood that we may be wor wor worshiping virtually. However, we are still a thriving faith community. Trusting in the word of life given to us through our baptism, we are gathered in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Listen. The one who knows you is calling you by name. Inviting you to be enfolded into community. We will follow the voice of love. You will find here refreshment for your body and soul. And space to rest your weary bones. We will follow the voice of love. A table of community is set for you. And the enemies around and within. And all are welcome. We will follow the voice of love. Come, Come let, let us worship. worship. Loving God, Today, as we contemplate you as our shepherd, we acknowledge the limits we put on your goodness. We recall the times when we have hardened our hearts to those who don't belong to our fold. We admit that we have seen the suffering caused by unjust practice, have seen brothers and sisters in need, and yet, we have refused your help. We declare that there have been times when we have been quick to condemn and slow to love. We confess to sometimes being like hired help. We see the wolf coming and run away because in essence we do not care for what is not our own, we are sorry. Children of God, hear these words of assurance. God is greater than our hardened hearts. When we are bold before God, and there are true to the commandment to love one another, we receive the mercy we desire, and God comes and dwells in us. Thanks be to God.
Thank you, Sarah Ann, for that wonderful piece and also for playing our prelude. Christ be with you. Christ be in our midst. Let us pray. Loving Shepherd, through the gift of this gathered community, may we know your attentive care, abundant beauty, and the power of reconciliation. Guide us, protect us, feed us, renew us, love us. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading this Good Shepherd Sunday is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. It's really familiar, isn't it? While I was reading it, I am sure many of you were thinking of funerals, where you sat through hearing that. How you had to memorize it in Sunday school or confirmation class. Maybe even during a tough time in your life, when you opened your Bible, to that psalm, and it got you through that tough time. It's a great psalm. It's a familiar psalm, and part of that is because it's a psalm of hope. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God's goodness and mercy will follow me. That is a great psalm. That is a great, great way to live. You may have remembered, while you're hearing this, pictures of Jesus as a shepherd. Many of us went to Sunday school with that picture hanging on the wall of Jesus standing there holding the sheep, the staff in his other hand, sheep all around him, and of course, that was the blonde, blue-eyed Jesus. Now, thank goodness, we do teach our children that Jesus was Middle Eastern. And we also teach them that the word shepherd really is a metaphor. A metaphor in this psalm and a metaphor in the gospel. Jesus is that shepherd that guides us. And the word shepherd was used because in the first century and prior to that in ancient Israel, there were many shepherds. People who heard this were familiar with that term shepherd. Many of them were shepherds themselves or had neighbors or relatives who lived their lives being a shepherd. And what does a shepherd do? A shepherd surrounds those sheep, holds them together so the flock doesn't scatter because there's no fences. Shepherd has to be strong. 
and push the sheep, but not too much, or they'll get scared and scatter. Shepherd has to be gentle, but not too gentle, or the, shepherd, the sheep will scatter again. Shepherd, the protector, the guide, the one who the sheep follow. And isn't that how we think of God and how we think of Jesus being with us and holding us all together? We have in this uh, psalm going, this journey, moving, going through still waters, going through to a valley, movement as God guides the psalmist through and then into that dark, dark valley. But the psalmist is not afraid because the psalmist has relied on God, following God on the roads of righteousness, on those paths all the way through. And when they get to that darkest valley where everything seems to be falling apart, the psalmist can go through knowing that God is with them, that the good shepherd is guiding him, just as that good shepherd guides us. You know, back in ancient times, when the shepherds were taking their flocks all over the place, sometimes they had to find another place where there would be grass for the sheep to eat. And they'd send out some of those shepherds to find a place to graze. Sometimes that land was in enemy's area, an area that may have been taken over by some uh, other people. And if they were allowed to go to that place, the shepherds that went out ahead of them set up a table so they would have food when they got there. A table in the midst of their enemies, a banquet. And they would go there and eat So God is with you even when you go into situations that you may be afraid, that you may be worried, that you may not be sure about. God is there. The psalmist tells us it's okay. We don't have to worry. And when we get to that darkest valley, the same, we don't have to worry because the table's set for us. There is a banquet there for us. This psalm is full of hope. Hope and knowledge that God is always with us. That I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That God will be with us always. And sometimes, sometimes just knowing that is enough to get us through. So bookmark this in your Bible. Refer to it when you need it. And God will get us through all the tough times. Amen.
Thank you, Davin, for leading us on the organ while we sang, and of course, Kim for also playing on the piano. If you would like to lift someone up in prayer or concern, you can please put it into the chat, and please always use the first name only. Let us pray Psalm 23. God is my shepherd, I shall not want. What are you waiting, wanting for yourself, your loved ones, this community, and this world? God makes me lie down in green pastures. God leads me beside still waters. God restores my soul. What are your prayers for the earth? For restoration and reconciliation, for stillness in the places of chaos. Even though I walk through the shattered valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. What shadows cross your path? Where does your comfort lie? You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. What are your causes for celebration? Where can you point to the overflowing cup? Surely, Surely goodness, goodness and, and mercy shall follow me. All the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of our God my whole life long. As we lift up those these prayers, we also pray for the family of Marie Olinger. Marie was our organist for many, many years, retiring about six years ago, and she passed away on Friday. God, we ask that you surround all those who are listed and those names on our hearts with your light and with your healing love. And we pray all this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our cup overflows with the abundance of God's mercy. There is more than enough for all when we together are willing to share ourselves and our possessions. We offer Christ's healing example to a world shattered by selfishness. There are several ways to give to the church. Ooh, excuse me, to the church. You can text 610-490-8292. You can go online at maidencreekchurch.org and push the donate button. Or you can just send an envelope to the church. We thank everyone for their generosity.
Thank you, Becky. We love to hear you sing. How can we express our thanks, O oh God? We show our thanks by passing on your love in truth and in action. Grant us courage to take those risks so that others may see Christ abiding in us and come to know your goodness and mercy. Amen. Beloved, let us love. Not in word or speech. But in truth and action. In peace to love and serve our God. And now may God bless you and keep you. May God be with you and may you know that always. God is there. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Amen.